Hello and welcome back. I thought I would do a quick video to review some basic revenue management terms so that as we use those in other videos they will be familiar to you. Uh, this may be review for some of you but um, I thought it would be worthwhile to dis just take a few minutes in this video. I'm also I'm not going to go into the calculation behind these terms. What's more important I think is that you understand the term, the context of the term, and why airlines are using these terms and metrics as opposed to other things. If you understand the term and what it means, the math is trivial. So I'd rather start with an understanding of the term rather than give you the math because a lot of times we get we get distracted by the math and then we don't understand what um, uh, the, the value of the term is uh, in the first place. So let's go ahead. Uh, I'm going to go quickly. If you have questions, leave them in the comments and I can go deeper into some of these. The first one is the measure of capacity that airlines use. And I'm using ASM, M for miles. You can substitute K if you'd like. Let me get a pen here. Uh, excuse me. There we go. Um, so you could you could put a K here for available seat kilometers. Uh, so this is the number of seats that airlines have multiplied by the number of miles that the airline travels. So rather than just take uh, a sum of the number of seats that the airline has or the number of airplanes the the airline has, what their real inventory is, what they have to sell, is the number of miles that they fly those airlines in their seats. So uh, if they have a 100 mile uh, flight, a flight that travels one, 100 miles and they have 100 seats on that airplane, that would be 10,000 available seat miles. The next term is related to that this is the number of passengers that are flying in those seat miles. So revenue passenger miles RPM is the number of passengers multiplied by the number of miles they are flying. So if you had uh, on that 100 mile flight you had 100 seats and only 75 passengers in those seats then your revenue passenger miles would be 7500, 75 times 100. That leads us to load factor so we combine these two terms uh, ASMs and RPMs and we divide RPMs into ASMs and in our simple example here if it was just one flight we would have uh, 7500 RPMs over 10,000 ASMs and our load factor would be 75 percent. Now a, a, a more obvious way of doing this would just be to say take the 75 customers divided by the 100 seats and on a per flight basis you would get the same answer but airlines want to know their how full their flights are on average across their entire network and since different flights have different distances this is the this is the way they sort of normalize the load factor across across the network and then finally we have yield this is a measure of how productive airlines are using their inventory. So you take the total number of passengers flying in that and those available seats uh, divided by the number of miles those uh, customers are are flying. So if you had those uh, 75 customers uh, the total revenue that they're generating dividing by the number of seat miles they're taking out of inventory then you would get a measure of yield or how how much how much the airline is getting for each unit of inventory uh, so this is related to average fare so on a flight a per flight basis you may be more interested to like look at the average fare that each customer is paying but on a network level yield is more relevant now when you look at these when you look at these metrics individually they can be sometimes misleading and sometimes uh just irrelevant. So if you were just to look at available seat miles for for a big airline this would be some enormous number. What's really relevant is the change in ASM. So if you saw that an airline was increasing ASMs year over year by 10% 
then you could conclude that their capacity is increasing by 10%. The absolute number is not relevant to you. Similarly with revenue passenger miles, the actual, the absolute number would be some enormous number that nobody really, you know, remembers or looks at. What's important is the year of year change. Now if you saw that um, RPMs were increasing 10% year over year, then you could say that the airline's traffic was increasing 10% year over year. But you have to consider the context, right? So sometimes you see in, in media reports about airlines uh, reporting their, their traffic results for a month and the headline might be, you know, airline X increases traffic 10% year over year. Actually, that's, that tells you nothing without knowing ASMs. If your traffic increases 10% year over year, but your ASMs increased by 20% year over year, then you're, you're really doing worse off, right? You're not using as much of the inventory as you were um, previously. And you would see that in the load factor. So be very careful when you look at these terms, if you see them in isolations, not to make conclusions without considering the context. And the best metric that incorporates all of this, and the most important term when uh, talking about the revenue side of an airline, is RASM. So this is the revenue per available seat mile. So this is the total revenue the airline is genera generating from its customers divided by the inventory that they have, all of the available seat miles. And when you see this number change year over year, you can really make a good assessment of whether the airline is doing better or worse. So if the airline is increasing RASM year over year, then that means on a per unit basis, they're generating more revenue than they were before. And you can see how this is more relevant than just looking at revenue. If you saw that revenue was increasing year over year by 10% for an airline, then you really don't know what to make of that unless you know what capacity is, right? So if the airline doubled their capacity, excuse me, um, increased capacity by 20%, but revenue by 10%, RASM would go down. Um, so it could be misleading to only look at, at revenue. Similarly with load or yield, if you saw that an airline's load factor increased year over year, well, you can't conclude that that's better because their yield might have gone down. Similarly, if, if the yield is going up, if they're getting more per customer, but they're flying fewer customers, RASM would go down. So RASM is the most important relevant metric in revenue management. We always maximize RASM. We never maximize load or yield because that could actually be suboptimal uh, to the airline's network. Let's skip over to the cost side. We have on the cost side one uh, big metric that is the most relevant and that is cost per available seat mile so the airline takes its total cost spreads them across all of the seat miles that they have and come up with one number that they can then compare to RASM you often will see this X fuel chasm and the reason airlines will report this and track this is because this is a better metric of controllable costs so chasm includes fuel fuel is a big portion of an airline's cost base and it's often seen as a as a an, an uncontrollable cost so if you saw that chasm was up year over year by 10 percent it doesn't always tell you how well the, the airline is managing managing cost if you see that x fuel chasm is up year over year by 10 percent that would mean the airline is not doing a good job managing its cost because of these are the costs that the airline has within their control now when we get down to profits though we have to we have to look at total chasm so when you're looking at a um, at the profitability of an airline now this would really be like profits at the ASM uh, level but when you want to assess how profitable an airline how how big their margins are it's their RASM minus their chasm so the first thing you want to see is that RASM is above chasm that means you have a profitable airline when chasm goes above RASM that means your costs are higher than um, your revenue and airlines are trying to manage this gap you want to increase the gap between RASM and chasm because that will be that will lead to uh, higher 
profits. So when it comes down to it, you know, you need to understand these terms up here. But what's really important to airlines is how much rev their revenue they're making per each unit of inventory and how much it costs them to produce each unit of inventory. And that will determine how healthy the airline is. So keep these two in mind. Um, I think that's all we really, you know, there are some other metrics that we'll come across uh, in the videos, but that's basically what you need to know to get a general understanding of how airlines measure their own performance and how to assess performance when you see these metrics in um, uh, earnings releases or other media reports. Okay, see you in the next video.